Welcome back, Art Heads. There's I, James Com, your half ass reporter, the guy on the bike. Special shout out to our friends and viewers in Buenos Aires, Key Largo, Florida, and Calgary. We're gonna run in here to Shrine and take a look at a two person show. Hello. How's it going? Good, how are you doing? I'm good. The title of the show is Spider by Haley Barker and Sherry Urquhart. Is that how you pronounce that? Yeah, Sherry Urquhart. Sherry Urquhart, okay. Thank you. Who does the uh, the tapestries and who does the paintings? Cherie Urquhart does the uh, tapestries and Kelly Parker does all the paintings. Okay, thank you. Does that make me crazy? Does that make me crazy? Possibly. Sherry Urquhart, Shikari, 1990. This is wool, mohair, metallic fiber, acrylic yarn, and silk fibers, 84 by 117. Well, it says here that uh, Sherry actually passed away a couple of years ago, and uh, she was a lifelong artist. I uh, was cruising by here the other night and I peeked through the window as they were doing the install and uh, thought that uh, this work looked familiar to me somehow. And uh, reading through the press release, I see that uh, Sherry was one of the artists featured in Bad Painting at the new museum. And uh, well, that was one of the breakthrough shows in New York in, uh, I guess you'd say the post-minimalist period. This was kind of the uh, beginning of neo-expressionism and the return of figurative painting. I guess it was 1977, something like that. Also, I was noting that uh, Sherry is quite a uh, fabulous technician. I'm looking at the, uh, the sheer nightgown that this woman is wearing, and uh, I would say that that would be good if you could do that with paint, but uh, Sherry's doing this with uh, yarn.
Also, I like the uh, the metallics. So this is Haley Barker, White Carnation 2022 Oil and Linen. And uh, well, I think Haley's a pretty good technician too. They make a point out of the fact that uh, Haley paints these paintings and some of them are large like this one. This is titled New Studio Alter 2022 Oil and Linen. It's 100 by 82. They say that she paints these all with small brushes. So in that way, they almost relate more to drawing getting down with a little stylist and uh, grinding away. Also, I've seen a lot of work recently where the painters are trying to be as sparse and use as little amount of paint as possible. I think maybe Haley could fit into that. Also, uh, She's got a good uh, compositional sense. They talk about her spending time in the in her garden and uh, that that has become almost an art project for her and the placement of the flowers and things like that are just like you would design a painting. This is titled, For Ms. Hawk, 2022. And evidently she said that uh, when she was remodeling her studio or relocating her studio, something like this, that they uh, turned up this hawk that was injured. This piece is 80 by 65. And I was thinking because uh, Haley uses the small brushes, it almost has the sense of uh, pointillism, maybe. It's another Sherry Urquhart. Praying hands and feet. Okay, so there's the feet. There's the hands. Um, this is a good chance to sort of observe the effects of the, the metallics against the regular wool or cotton or nylon. And let's just say wool, mohair, metallic fiber, acrylic yarn, and silk fibers. The Death Card, Mother Peace Deck. It's a 13 inch Tondo. This is another big. I would call them the tapestries. They were actually calling them rugs. This is Woman One, Stage Three, 1995. Okay, so that painting in the background is an Odon Redon painting. Well, they're 
talking about. This is the woman that is surrounded by a bunch of little man butterflies, man flies, something like that. And uh, of course the large female figure has a fly swatter. You know, Sherry has a wonderful sense of the various qualities that you get with the, the yarns and the fibers and the way that uh, she leaves some of this long, some short, some of it is metallic, some of it is flat color. It's really beautiful. Um, I guess it's been a couple of months ago, we uh, looked at a David Kramer exhibition at Freight Volume and he was doing hooked rugs, but I should, uh, I should suggest that he come over and take a look at this and uh, <clears throat> it might uh, make him uh, reestablish his ambitions. Balance of Power, 1983. Well, I was talking about how Sherry was part of the, the bad painting group, or at least was featured in Marsha Tucker's show of that title. <clears throat> and in the press release, they talk about although she did receive a certain amount of critical attention, uh, some of those artists went on to make fairly successful careers out of that recognition they got from the show. And I uh, kind of say that although Sherry did get some attention, she had to uh, spend a lot of time working and uh, I guess I should read a little bit from the press release. Like many aspiring artists of her generation, Urquhart moved to New York City to follow her dreams. In order to pay the bills in a new city, she took a full-time job in the fine art workshop for prisoners at Rikers Island Correctional Center from 1978 to 1982. This job eventually led her towards the St. Francis residence in New York City, where she became the lead of the facility's art program for more than 25 years. St. Francis offers permanent housing to one of the most vulnerable homeless populations, individuals living with severe mental impairments and illness. Urquhart was a generous and compassionate instructor and inspired many of her home's residents to discover themselves as artists over the years. But her true passion was her own art career which explored the traditional craft of hooked rugs made using Persian wool, satin, mohair, senilin, yarn, and occasionally her own dog's hair. Urquhart deserves credit as a pioneering force in the history of art, given that she blurred the lines between the very traditional craft of hooking rugs and contemporary painting utilizing a medium not often associated with fine art. She created wildly themed narrative hook rugs that are on an epic scale, with some measuring more than 11 feet wide. The process of creating hook rugs is incredibly labor intensive. And the off artist often spent an, an entire year creating just one large piece. In a sense, Sherry Urquhart help break painting free from its reliance on classical art materials, such as brushes and paint, and her complex textiles all resonate at odds to both the humor and tragedy of human, ex human existence. Okay, so this is the super showstopper. It's titled Dresser of Disdain, 1990. Wool, mohair, metallic fiber, acrylic yarn, and silk fibers. 
Well, they talk about her taking a year to make one of these, and I would say that this would be a good example. You could spend even more than a year. Uh, also, I was gonna say that, uh, you know, a lot of people, if they were doing something like this, they would kind of uh, shape their practice uh, to fit the market, you know? So, uh, maybe you would do something that's, uh, four by five feet, and, and that might be uh, more saleable, something like this. I think uh, really is so ambitious that uh, you have to realize that Sherry was just doing this because she had this total love and commitment to what she was doing. And such a great touch, touch with the uh, Shine. Also, you know, she's got a wonderful sense of kitsch, I guess. So they got this picture of the bear, and you got this bizarre Louis the Fourteenth chaise lounge, but it's covered with zebra skin. Got this character here with his fly rod. I think a lot of the pieces also, she's dealing with the uh, woman versus man thing, the feminine versus the masculine. I also uh, love the variegations that you get in these uh, color sections. There is so there's so rich and so much stuff going on there. And as I said, I, I would consider these things as tapestries, but um, boy, I'm looking at the, uh, the tufts, the, uh, the nubs there and thinking that would be really sensual to walk on those with your bare feet maybe. This is another big painting by Haley. It's titled Small Path Gateway to 2022, oil on linen. It's 100 by 82. Okay, so I was thinking that these also kind of make me think of uh, Bonard. Maybe Haley might live out in the countryside somewhere. Untitled Floral Pillow Five. It's wool and acrylic thread. Okay, you might expect to see something like that on your aunt's couch. This is another Haley painting. This is Jenny at the River after the fire, 2022. 100 by 82 inches. Well, I was talking about Bonard and some of his technical things in painting and the garden, kind of the way he would divide up the space and then uh, his little areas of uh, distinction, the areas he was trying to highlight to build his composition. He kind of filled in with patterns of paint. Uh, I think this piece, Haley gets into a little more dynamic composition of things. And also I'm looking at this sun with the kind of arcs and things going over there and it makes me think of 
Marsden Hartley and some of his uh, spiritual landscapes from New Mexico and, and maybe even some of the pieces that he did in Maine. Okay, we're gonna wrap up with a couple of more pieces here. Well, I'm looking at the guide here and I don't see these pieces or their titles. They're Haley Barker pieces. Okay, so we've got a little, this goes to her, her gardening. We've got a little plant that has fallen over and come out of the, the pot. Oh, got some, uh, some worms. Dandelions. And the garden hose could be a reference to the snake in the Garden of Eden even. And finally this piece. This looks like some kind of orchids. And I would say this is probably about uh, seven by five feet, 84 by 60. James Com reporting on the spider. Haley Barker and Sherry Urquhart here at Shrine. Okay, viewers, well, we're here on Henry Street. We're going to run into situations. I uh, was sliding by on the bicycle last weekend and looked in and saw the paintings and thought they were interesting, but they were closed. They had a sign in the window that said, come back in 15 minutes. So I waited for a week and then I did come back. If you feel like you want to chime in, go ahead. So this is a show by Mariah Dikenga. Does the show have a title? Behind Doors. Behind Doors. Okay, well, I was uh, telling our gallerist here that I'd seen Mariah's work at a show at The Hole a couple of years ago, and I was, uh, well, I was intrigued with the work, and uh, I think that Mariah's got a very interesting and unique technique, uh, a process, but I think one of the interesting things is that the, the process actually kind of involves uh, aesthetic layers of perception, maybe. Uh, so on one level, you've got these uh, geometric abstractions. And then on another level, you've got uh, this kind of brushy, expressionistic grounds that she's working on. Let's see if we can find the title for this one. They're all untitled. They're all, that makes it easy for me. They're all untitled. And I would say that this one is one of the, what is it? 48 by 36, something like that, untitled. Uh, and I think the materials, she does the grounds with 
acrylic modeling paste and gels? Is that what she builds up the texture of the stuff? Yes. With? And then all of the uh, the actual color part of this is all hand brushed oil paint. And Mariah does a great job of uh, kind of almost creating an illusion that these are somehow maybe derived from a screen, a computer screen, or a, maybe a TV screen or something. And uh, so you get these interesting little uh, fades at the edges. Okay, so this is also untitled, 36 by 47. So I think Mariah's got a nice color sense, but again, it's kind of uh, kind of electric colors. We've got some pinks and magentas, and if we look at the edges of this uh, dark indigo form, you can see the the colors fading in and out. And uh, I guess Mariah lives in Qatar and Vermont. Splits her time there. This is untitled. This is 25 by 36 inches. So I uh, I like the way Mariah uses a kind of uh, rounded edge on the canvases. Here's our last piece. Untitled 25 by 36 inches. This has been James Calm reporting on Mariah the Kenga. Behind closed doors, was that it? Behind doors. Behind doors. Here in situations. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna roll on now. right off the Central Elm. You can take the train right here to get there. But right now, DJ, at Paperboy the Prince on Instagram. DJ, drop something, man.